I grew up very close to Venice. It was a city that I knew very well. Every time you do a movie, you bring with yourself whatever you have. My friend Vittorio Storaro says that you carry with you 2,000 years of, you know, human history. I wouldn't take it so far, but anyway, you take this to cinematography. Uh, cinematography, it's about collecting all the impressions coming from, uh, you know, the actors, the story, the environments where you are, the atmosphere created by the scenes, and, 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 and be inspired by that. And that guides uh, the way I light the movie and the way I photograph the movie. The Comfort of Strangers. It was very precisely written by Ian McEwan in a book. And the screenplay was written by Harold Pinter. I know he came to Venice to do a read through with the actors. And I know that someone said, Hey, do you mind if maybe instead of saying this, we can say a phrase, a phrase which is uh, slightly different? And uh, the answer from uh, Harold Pinter was, Don't even think about it. This is the story. And this is where it's going to stay. So I think. Uh, even Paul, who I'm sure loved the story the way it was and was happy to film it in its darkness and its, its uh, complexity the way it was, um, that's how we shot the movie, really. You know, it wasn't a movie about, all right, let's go out there and improvise a little bit. The text and what the actors represented was so exactly precise that you could only frame it and photograph it and light it in a certain way to go along with whatever the meaning of the story was. Now, tell me, I'm a man of immense curiosity, passionate curiosity. Are you married, you two? No. You live together. You live together in sin. No. No? Huh? Why not? In this day and age, no one would stop you. In this day and age, as you well know, there are no standards. <laughs> what about you? Tell us a bit about you. I mean, who are you anyway? The story is a very complex story about a love relationship and the encounter with this very powerfully strange couple. And so everything is very inside the minds of these guys. It's also a very interesting sexual adventure, you know. So there's a lot of darkness going on in this story. Paul Schrader is a fantastic, brilliant intellectual mind. And he's also very visually oriented. However, it's not about seeking beauty in itself. There's got to be a reason behind everything you do. And the reason has to do with the functionality uh, for the story you're actually telling. He didn't want a postcard kind of Venice. We needed a, a kind of a dangerous, strange Venice. Because the story was that these two go to Venice to brighten up their passion, their lives, and then they get lost in this city. So we needed to make a, a rather mysterious Venice now. That is not very easy because the personality of Venice is so huge, it's not easy to take it somewhere else. However, what Paul wanted is to accentuate this Byzantine aspect, oriental aspect of Venice. Well, Venice had a lot of trades with the Orient, I mean, with Turkey, uh, the East. I think that the, the main idea for Paul was to try to create an environment where something would become not so simple so that these two could lose themselves in this city. And I suggested to shoot this movie in Super 35 back in those days, which means with a bigger negative than the standard widescreen negative that we used, because I wanted the idea of having this high quality, you know, Venice, with a lot of details to give to the movie. One of the points that we discussed with Paul was having shots that were not wide and have a beautiful dimension in the city. It was about having shots that maybe most of the time didn't see the roof of the buildings. I think everything was closed in. And to stay intimate and inside in the darkness and, 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 and you know, and don't, not open enough to vistas, which indefinitely didn't go for a classic Venice that we all know. To give you an example, a very interesting scene was in a church I remember I lived and there's just a little door that opens, so there's just a blade, a beam of light coming in through the door, lighting Natasha and Rupert that walk inside. And then they look around, and the paintings are 
on the high part of this church, and the church is lit, so there are lamps that only light top part of the church. So the whole thing is in semi-darkness and matching the story point with the camera and the lighting. We did a very interesting shot, which was uh, uh, the couple goes to dinner uh, on a sidewalk on a canal, you know, and we had a box so we could put the camera lens right above the water. And the camera slides down under a bridge at night. I might put a yellow light at the end of the canal. I'm on the, trying to take this city into a mysterious kind of aspect. I think we shot the movie Winter Fall. Venice is so fantastic in winter because there's not a lot of people, not a lot of tourists. At times the water is totally flat as opposed to being open. See, they definitely have some kind of magic. Obviously, if you think about Venice, uh, everything is transported by water. So, you know, you're shooting a scene with two guys sitting at a table outside. And say, oh, Jesus, I wish I had a light coming from there, you know, from that window. That cannot happen because it means going down three or four canals and moving a boat and picking up something from the third boat. Now you got to get to the third boat, so you got to move the second. And uh, so it's very complicated to move equipment around. So that really imposes you some accurate, you know, sort of planning, meaning there's a sort of mafia that runs the movie organization in the city, very special Venetian mafia. So, I mean, you gotta go with locals and that will help you out. We have this big, fantastic set, apartment built in Rome on stage. Beautiful place. There's all these paintings on the wall were beautifully painted by a professional. It's amazing the amount of craftsmen that the Italian cinema can go to when you need set decorating. Well, the apartment was really representing the power of uh, the character. These books are the favorite literature of my father, my grandfather. All first editions what kind of family he was coming from and what kind of person he was. So that's probably why we had all these long dolly shots, you know, on stage. Gianni Quaranta was the production designer, built a big balcony with a reconstructed, miniaturized landscape of Venice. And the dimension of that set really worked well. Wow. Mm. It is beautiful, isn't it? I spend as much time as possible out here. But the main scene, when they first go to the house and it happens in this very intense sunset situation. And I love this idea of this Venice so far away and uh, look kind of theatrical, this kind of mystic kind of tone and feel with the golden afternoon light with a kind of a Byzantine lighting inside the house, casting strange shadows around. One of the points of Paul's filmmaking was to describe the relationship that Chris Walken's character had with the Venetian world he lived in. And when the, so he goes to Ibarra, well, that's the reason of that Dolly move, I think, is to connect the relationship with these Venetian people. I think that was pretty cool to keep that kind of atmosphere and that kind of very brainy, inside kind of storytelling and things that happen inside the heads of the people. I don't think we refer to images or try to be inspired by some other films, uh, which to me I think is not always a very good idea. It's okay to maybe talk about something as a reference, but I don't remember, but there was a love scene in Hotel, I think, between the two main characters, Natasha Richardson and Rupert Everett. And at some point, Paul wanted a, a reference to a Hitchcock movie. So he liked the idea that the scene was lit in green. Paul was seeing these shots in the dailies later. He was saying, Dante, you should have told me it would have come out so beautiful. I would have done more. I said, Paul, yes, of course. Oh. So I think I also like the idea that I could collaborate with Paul. I was asked by Paul to play a part in this movie. The policeman at the end of the movie that makes an interrogation to, to Chris Walken. And he asked me, why don't you do that, Dante? Well, he had probably shied away 
with the excuse that I was busy because I had to do the photography of the movie. And I know. <laughs> Instead, the part was played by a great friend of mine who was the producer of the movie, Mario Cotone. On the other hand, you leave your razor with your fingerprints, you book a ticket under your own name, and you travel with your own passport. We don't get it. I do remember a fantastic phrase that Paul told me one evening. I mean, he suggested to me, you know, we're shooting in exterior at night. And maybe you could shoot in this wall of the hotel and think about putting a little bit of a, a water shimmering effect on the wall. Oh, ah, yes, it was a great idea. So I started working on it. And we placed a tank of water and then some mirrors and then something holding up these mirrors we were floating and we moved the water and I was changing the position of the light and tried to get it. At some point, Paul came to me and said, Dante, just make it a song. Don't make it a concert, which I thought was one of the most brilliant lines I ever heard on a movie set, and I, 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 which I used many times to talk to my crew. And so as you as a cinematographer are trying to achieve a beauty, so you hold back and you move things and you keep correcting. But at the same time, favor the main part of movie making, which is the relationship between the director and his actors, because through this relationship and through what the actors do, the story gets to an audience. You know, that's the main instrument. Every movie is a step on the way of what you do in your career, in your life work. And this movie was definitely one of the films that made a difference because you're working with Paul Schrader. I totally immersed myself in the shooting of this, which was a little different and special. And then having this story to photograph, you know, with Paul, with these characters so strongly defined and different in what they do. And I like the idea that the movie wasn't so much about action and expansion in these spaces, but rather capturing some states of minds. Actually, when I went back and I saw it again after many years, I was uh, shocked. I think the movie has a, a serious weight, has a serious importance. And it was very important for me.